The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what goes on in the home of The Great Gildersleeve. Leroy, it seems, is in the doghouse. He got himself suspended from school, and he's been sent to bed without any supper. The big chip. Oh, Lady McCann. Oh, I wish I'd told her what I really thought of her. All right, so I'm suspended for a week. What am I supposed to do, bust out crying? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kids are in school. They're slaving away, and I'm outside playing. Not bad. Yeah, I'm going to like this. That's what he thinks the next morning at breakfast. Leroy? Yes, Unc? Out in the garage, Leroy, you will find a mess. I want it cleaned up. I didn't do it, Uncle. I just don't like Nevertheless, it. you will clean it up. Yes, sir. I want every tool in its proper place. I want those broken flower pots removed, and I want it swept out. I want it spotless. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Somebody spilled some paint in there, too. I almost stepped in it. Not me. You clean it up. <laughs> understand? Yes, sir. Fine sister. Having done that, my boy, you will repair to the cellar. There you will take all the kindling and stack it neatly in the corner near the coal bin. When you finish stacking the kindling, you will proceed to remove all that junk you've scattered around down there. All of it. Understand? Yes, sir. What about the back porch? Why don't you drop dead? <laughs> yes, I meant to speak about that. All those crates that you and Piggy piled up there, I want them put away. That's our machine gun nest. I don't care what it is. Get rid of it. And following that... Uh, say, that's a swell necktie you're wearing, Unc. That's new, isn't it? Where'd you get it? Don't try to change the subject, Leroy. <laughs> After you have cleaned up the back porch, I want you to go up to your room and study your lessons. Oh, oh, gosh, just cleaning out the garage will take me all morning. When do I get to play? You don't get to play, Leroy. This is not a vacation. It's a punishment. You hear that, Bertie? I want you to keep an eye on him and see that he sticks to business. Yes, sir. You'd better expect me home for lunch, too. I intend to check up on him myself. He... Don't hear me. <laughs> I'm not... And don't sit there feeling sorry for yourself. I'm sitting here. Out to the garage, Leroy. Out to the garage. I'm not going to have any boys getting suspended around here. Bertie, how soon is lunch? Leroy, I declare you've been asking me that every 15 minutes since breakfast. Oh, gosh, that's hard work I'm doing out there. Takes energy. I know, I know. I feel kind of faint. All right, Leroy, you can start in if you want to. Your lunch is on the dining room table. Thanks, Bertie. It ain't nothing but sandwiches. Your uncle said I wasn't giving you nothing but a regular school lunch. That's okay. Boy, this looks super. Your uncle ought to be along any minute if you want to wait. No, I'd better start in. There's a little piece of that lemon meringue pie left over from last night. If you don't tell your uncle, I gave it to you. Bertie, I'm glad I got one friend left. Leroy, you shouldn't talk like that. The best friend you got is your uncle. Are you kidding? He doesn't even like me. Of course he likes you. He thinks the world of you, Leroy. Nope. Nobody likes me. Except Miss Wynn. Ah, that's a lot of nonsense. Who's Miss Wynn? She's my new teacher. That is, she was till old lady McCann came back and got her fired. <laughs> How do you know she got her fired? Because she's always doing things like that. What do you know, Bertie? She's got a piece of rubber hose in her closet, and she beats you with it when you're bad. Is that a fact? You can ask any kid in the school. Did she beat you? Well, no, but I was lucky. I just got suspended. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how the whole thing happened, Bertie. I was sitting there. Oh, here comes your uncle now. Who? I better get back to work. I'll take the sandwich with me. But, Leroy... You can slip me the pie later, Bertie, after he goes. I don't know. Mr. Gilsley? Yes, me, Bertie. Lunch about ready? 
I'm short for time. Got to get out to the reservoir and see about things there. All ready for you, Mr. Gilsey. It's on the table. Uh, fine, fine. <laughs> uh, I thought some sandwiches would be nice. Sandwiches? That's what Leroy had. Oh, where is Leroy? Oh, he's out in the garage working. He is, eh? Has he really stuck at it, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, I never saw a little boy work so hard in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I threw a scare into him, all right. It's a fact. Why, I could hardly get him to come and eat his lunch, hardly. One bite and he's right out there again working. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Let's see. What are these? Oh, cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> well, they won't put on any weight. Uh, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yes, Bertie. Don't you think maybe it's going a little far, making the little boy work all day long like that with no time to play? The boy was guilty of impertinence, Bertie. He was rude to his teacher. He must be taught a lesson. Hand me the salt, please. Yes, sir. Uh, say, Bertie, that lemon meringue pie we had last night, you haven't got a little piece of that left, have you? Uh, no, sir, I'm sorry, I ain't. <laughs> Yes, sir, that Leroy sure worked hard out there this morning, lifting all them heavy things and sweeping out. He sure worked hard. Well, I don't want to be too hard on the boy. After all, I wasn't perfect myself. As a child, I mean. <laughs> I had my little run-ins with the authorities. You can tell Leroy, Bertie, that he only has to work during school hours. After 3 o'clock, he can play. Gee, thanks, Uncle. Huh? Thanks a lot. Oh, I thought you were out in the garage, Leroy, working. I was just going... Yeah, I'm only surprised he didn't get the teacher suspended. <laughs> hmm. Quiet around here. Anybody home, for goodness sake? Oh, good evening, Unky. Home so early? Is there anything particularly unusual in my being home at 6 o'clock? Uncle Mort Marshall's here. Well, do we have to whisper? I don't see him. Where is he? Uncle Mort, please. He's in the study. In the study? What's he doing in there? He's going away to school. He came over to say goodbye. That why you had the door closed? We closed it to keep Leroy out. Now, come in and say hello. As soon as I hang up my hat. And please be nice to him. Come along. Uncle Mort, you remember Marshall Bullard? Well, I certainly should. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. I understand, Marshal, that you're going away to school. That's fine. Uncle Mort, really? Huh? Ooh, I mean, it's fine you're going to school. <laughs> Too bad you're going away. <laughs> Just came over to say goodbye to Marjorie. Oh, leaving tonight? Well. Oh, no, sir. I'm not going till the end of the week, sir. Oh, taking no chances, eh? <laughs> well, good luck when you do go. Thank you, sir. I'll probably be over to say goodbye again before that. Oh, I dare say. <laughs> What the devil is that? It's probably Leroy. He's down in the cellar. I better see what's going on down there. Yes, you'd better do that, Unky. If you'll excuse me. <laughs> oh, go right ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. I never trust a boy who calls me sir. <laughs> do they have to close the door? By George, if they're smooshing in there. <laughs> After all, I'm her uncle. I got a right to know what goes on. I think I'll just leave this door open, my dear, if you don't mind. It gets a little close in there. <laughs> Leroy! What's going on down there? Bertie! Yes, sir? What's all that racket? That's Leroy sitting up the cellar again. Well, I told him he could quit at 3 o'clock. I told him he could go out and play. Yes, sir. He went out for a while, and then he came back in again. But this isn't like Leroy. No, sir. I think he feels bad about something. I think he's got something on his mind. Why? Well, the way he acts. I asked about, ask him about it, and he just gave me a look and ran on down the cellar quick and then slammed the door. We'll have to see about this. Leroy! <laughs> Guess he didn't hear me. Well, I'll go down. I don't care. I don't care about Donald Kelsey or Robert Rosen, Platter, Peter Fisher, any of them. But Peggy, I thought he was my friend. Leroy! 
What's the matter, my boy? Nobody likes me. That's not true. I like you. No, you don't. Marjorie likes you. She does not. And Bertie likes you. Well, that's all. <laughs> Now, 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 now. Put on that hammer and come here. <laughs> here, my boy, blow your nose. Now, tell your old uncle. <laughs> tell your old uncle what's the matter. What are you doing down here? Why don't you go out and play? I did. Nobody would play with me. Why not? Their mothers wouldn't let them. Why not? Because I heard I got suspended. That's perfectly ridiculous. I don't care. I don't care that darn old kids play with me. Now, now, Leroy. <laughs> you shouldn't cry, a boy your age. I'm not crying. I just get so darn mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how it is. I get that way sometimes myself. I'll tell you what, my boy. You just come upstairs with me. I'll play with you. But I want to play with kids. Well, we'll see what we can do about it. Come along. <laughs> it, we're just coming up, Bertie. There's somebody at the door for Leroy, that little bullet boy. There. What did I tell you, my boy? There's somebody who wants to play with you. Oh, for corn's sake, Craig Bullard. Well, he's a little young, perhaps. You want me to send him away? Dinner's just about ready. No, no. Let me talk to him, Bertie. Yeah, I guess he's better than nobody. <laughs> Did I hear that kid brother of mine? Yeah, he's at the front door, Marshal. Hiya, Craigie, old boy. Hi, Leroy. Glad to see you. Come on in. I can't. I just come over to tell you my father won't let me play with you. Huh? <laughs> hey, Craigie, Nick. Yeah, just a minute. Say that again, Sonny. Yeah, let's have that again. My father says I can't play with you. He says you're a bad influence. Craig! He says you're just like your uncle. Oh! <laughs> What's happening? Young man, you run along home just as fast as your little legs will carry you. And you tell your father for me. You tell your father for me. For me. Mr. Gildersleeve, you'll have to forgive Craig. You too. If my nephew isn't good enough to play with Craig, you're not good enough to hang around my niece. Uncle Mort, you can't talk to Marshall like that. Oh, can I? Get off the property. <laughs> and stay off. He doesn't mean it, Marshall. Don't pay any attention to him. Go on, get off the property. Marshall! Evidently, I'm not welcome here. Good night. Now look what you've done. Marge, serve you right. Really, Uncle Mort, sometimes I think you're the stupidest man a girl ever had for an uncle. Marjorie, I'm inclined to think you're right. And the stupidest thing I ever did was to become an uncle. Who got me into this? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back again in a moment. Just now, we'd like to enact a little breakfast scene. The soon-to-be-contented man is played by yours truly, John Lang. There you are, John, dear. Nice golden brown toast, just the way you like it. Hey, you're handing it to me dry. What goes with it? Where's my favorite spread? Well, I didn't know you had a favorite. Wait a minute, my favorite wife. Don't you listen when I talk about the wonderful flavor of parquet margarine? Why, the many times you've heard me say how good parquet margarine tastes. The many, many oh, times. Oh, I was only teasing, dear. Of course we've got parquet margarine. Here you are. Well, that's more like it. This toast is delicious. Parquet margarine's delicious. You're delicious. What a character. There's a man who really knows what's delicious. Oh. <laughs> okay, Leroy, and I'll just step out of character a moment to remind our friends that parquet margarine is not only wonderfully good to eat, but is high in food energy value and fortified with important vitamin A. It's mighty economical, too. Only about half the price of costly spreads. So be sure to buy delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. 24 hours have passed, and his nephew, Leroy, is still suspended from school. He is also still being shunned by his friends. Gildersleeve is beginning to feel sorry for the boy, as we can see if we drop in at Mr. Peavy's drugstore. 
Mr. Peavy is out and back making up a prescription, but Leroy is consuming a chocolate soda while his uncle watches. Ah, oh, boy. Aren't you going to finish it, Leroy? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> How about another one? Oh, gosh, thanks, Uncle. Three is plenty. You may be right. Well, I got to get back to my office. You think you can amuse yourself for the rest of the afternoon? I suppose so. What do you think you'll do? I'll bum around, I guess. There must be something more wholesome than that. I'll be okay. I don't like to think of you just wandering around by yourself. Now, if there was some movie that you were crazy to see... There is, Unc, at the Majestic. Gosh, if I could go to the Majestic. Well, here's a quarter. You go on to the Majestic. But don't tell anybody I sent you. Oh, thanks. The Majestic has a triple horror. That'll carry me right up to supper time. Huh? Sure it won't spoil your appetite? Are you kidding? Those horror pictures make you hungry. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Uncle. I'll, I'll just be able to make it in time. Oh. Yeah, so long, my boy. Poor kid. Mr. Gildersleeve, was that somebody going out or somebody coming in? <laughs> no, Peavy, just Leroy leaving. What do I owe you? Yeah, yeah, just figure that out. Three chocolate sodas, is that right? That's right. <laughs> Doesn't seem possible. <laughs> well, that's 45 cents in one cent pack. Here. Thank you. 46, 50, 75, one dollar. Uh, isn't this a little unusual, Mr. Gildersleeve? Unusual? Buying Leroy's sodas in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, birthday, maybe. No, it's not his birthday. He's been suspended from school. You don't say. Well, it seems a funny reason to buy him a chocolate soda. That's not why I'm buying him a chocolate soda. But you said Let you were... me finish, please, Peavy, just once. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I thought you said that you... Allow me, Peavy. Permit me. Now, Leroy was suspended from school. I suppose you want to know why. I ain't say anything. I know you, Peavy. The boy was suspended because he was rude to his teacher. Suspended for a week. A week? Yes, pretty severe punishment, but I don't say it isn't fair. What I object to is that, it's, that none of Leroy's friends will play with him. Their parents seem to think he's some kind of an outcast. Well, that's the way of the world, Mr. Gildersleeve. Would you want Leroy playing with some young criminal? Leroy is not a criminal. <laughs> I think he's being persecuted, unjustly. I'm just trying to make it up to him, that's all. Well, if I were suspended from school and got free chocolate sodas, I might be tempted to make a habit of it. That's ridiculous. And yeah, if I like chocolate sodas. It is. <laughs> Peavy, it's easy to see you never were in a jam when you were young. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I tried to sneak onto a streetcar once without paying the five cents. My, my. Quite a crime. Were you arrested? No, but the conductor made me give him a nickel. A very humiliating experience. You haven't lived, Peavy. Naturally, you can't imagine what Leroy's going through. Why, if you... Good afternoon, Mr. Peavy. Have you got my prescription ready? Indeed, I have, Mrs. Townsend, right here. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Townsend? <laughs> How's little Arthur? Will you charge it, please, Mr. Peavy? Yes, ma'am, a dollar twelve. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't that woman speak to me? I've known her for years. Is uh, Arthur Townsend in Leroy's class? Well, yes, I believe he is, but... It... That's the way of the world, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> I'm afraid you're tarred with Leroy's brush. Yeah. But Leroy is just a kid. He's a nice little boy. They all are at the beginning. I guess Dillinger was a nice boy once. <laughs> Dillinger? Uh, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, I have some work to do out and back. Are you trying to get rid of me, Peavy? Oh, no. Yes, no. you are, Peavy. You're afraid I'll contaminate your other customers. You're afraid you'll lose some trade. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve... All right, you money grubber, you'll be sorry. <laughs> See who that is, will you, Bertie? I'm on my way. Oh, good evening, Judge. Evening, Bertie. He's right in the parlor, Judge. He's just starting in on the evening paper. And I'd a lot rather read it than talk to Hooker. Oh, hello, Horace. <laughs> hello, Gildy. Yeah, sit down. Make yourself at home. No, I can't stay, thank you. I was passing by, and I just thought I'd drop in and ask you about that financial report. Financial report? Yeah, you were supposed to give the financial report at the uh, school board meeting tomorrow night, remember? Oh, that. Sure, I remember. I've got the report already. That is, I will have. It's fine. It's fine. Well? 
Is that all you wanted to know? Uh, not exactly. Well, speak up. What is it? Well, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, Gilday, but it occurred to me you might like me to present your report to the school board. Why should you? I'm chairman of the finance committee. Why shouldn't I give the report? Well, a man in your position... That is to say, if I were in your position... What position? What the devil are you talking about? Stop beating around the bush. I'm afraid I'll have to. You're so thick. Who's thick? <laughs> you are in more ways than one. Hasn't Leroy been suspended from the Summerfield Grammar School? Yes, he has. And what of it? Well, doesn't that place you in a slightly embarrassing position as a member of the school board? How? Well, how would you feel standing up there with the school board when you can't even keep your own nephew in school? Now, see here, Judge. I had nothing to do with Leroy's difficulty. When the suspension period is over, he'll go back. wonder if there's any way he could get back sooner. Have you uh, tried to arrange it? No. I wonder if his teacher knows I'm on the school board. I think it would be most inadvisable for you to start throwing your weight around. I wasn't thinking of throwing my weight around. <laughs> Just thinking of dropping a hint. I've seen you drop a hint with an awful thud, Gilday. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest I'm undiplomatic, you old goat? I'll show you. I'll find a way out of this thing without any help from you either. Well, what about tomorrow night? I'll be there, don't you worry, and with a report. And I'll be able to look every member of that school board right in the eye. <laughs> Is that you, Leroy? Yeah, it's me. Supper ready? In a minute. How was the picture? Oh, it was okay. It was much fun going to the movies all by yourself. Yeah, I know. Sit down, my boy. There. Now, I think you've been punished enough for your rudeness to Miss McCann. Yeah? Gee, that's what I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> perhaps we can find a way to get you back in school tomorrow morning. How would you like that? Can you really, Unc? We'll see. You're sorry for your behavior, aren't you? Sure. Gosh, never thought I'd be suspended. Well, aside from the punishment... You realize you said a very bad thing to Miss McCann, that you hurt her feelings, that no boy in school should ever speak rudely to a teacher. You realize all that, don't you? Sure, sure. What are you getting at? That's not the attitude. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the boy. Now, if you'll just say that to Miss McCann. You mean I've got to apologize? Certainly. That's the manly thing to do, my boy. I can't, huh? Let's not be silly about this, Leroy. There's nothing easier than to apologize, and there's nothing that gives you a better feeling afterwards. I can't apologize to her. Nonsense. What makes you think you can? In front of all the other kids? Certainly. You insulted her in front of the other kids, didn't you? I didn't insult her. Okay, I insulted her. <laughs> Look, Leroy, there's nothing to this thing. You walk into the schoolroom tomorrow morning, you walk straight up to Miss McCann, and you say, Miss McCann, I owe you an apology for my thoughtless behavior. I want you to know that I'm very sorry. What do you think she'll do, bite you? She'll hit me with a rubber hose. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you're acting like a baby. But if you want to get back in school tomorrow, this is the only way to do it. Apologize? Apologize. The only way? The only way. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait till the week is up. But Leroy, <laughs> Leroy, you haven't got anybody to play with. You're not having any fun. You're miserable, aren't you? Sure I am. Then why not apologize? I hate to apologize. It just happens, young man, that there are other people concerned in this affair. It just happens that I personally find this whole thing very embarrassing. Oh, so that's it. No, that's not it. <laughs> I'm thinking principally of your welfare. The fact that I'm a member of the school board is entirely secondary. What do I care about the school board? Leroy, people are refusing to speak to me in the streets on account of you. I'm being an out... I'm becoming an outcast. So am I. But I'd rather be an outcast than apologize to old Lady McCann. You listen here. You'll apologize tomorrow whether you like it or not. with you, I'll walk right up to the door of your room. I'll listen while you make your apology. If that woman lays a finger on you, I'll be there with you in a jiffy. Okay. Where is your room, Leroy? At the end of the hall. Hmm. Long hall, isn't it? <laughs> All right, my boy, now be brave. You say what I told you to say. Just walk straight up to her and say, Miss McCann. Oh, shut up. By Leroy. <laughs> uh, good morning, Miss McCann. 
Good morning, Leroy. I'm... I'm sorry I... That's all right. Just take your seat. Perhaps you'd like to lead the opening song, Leroy. Okay. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear teacher. Good morning to you. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> Maybe I ought to go in and say a few words to her myself, though, just to make it sure. <laughs> Miss McCann? Yes? I wonder if I could just have a word with you. Certainly. Excuse me a moment, class. Yes? I'm Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy's uncle. Oh. I just thought I'd mention that it was my idea for Leroy to apologize. <laughs> and he was supposed to say a good deal more. That is, he was supposed to make a more elaborate apology. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the little devil... Mr. Gildersleeve. If you don't realize it's the spirit of an apology that counts and not the words, you aren't fit to bring up children. Miss McCann. I suspected Leroy's difficulty must be with his home training, and now I'm sure of it. But I only... In fact, you're the one that should be suspended. <laughs> but no, no, she's going for the rubber hose! Oh. from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. Round about mid-afternoon, boys and girls are apt to get mighty hungry at school. And when they get home and make a beeline to the pantry, here's something that's sure to satisfy hungry young appetites. It's crisp crackers and slices of tender, fresh bread spread with delicious parquet margarine. Children really go for parquet's fresh, delicate flavor because it tastes so good. And there's another important reason why so many mothers serve after-school snacks of crackers and bread spread with delicious parquet. It's that wonderful energy parquet margarine helps provide. And the important vitamin A that's added to every single pound of parquet. Of course, parquet is mighty economical, too. Only about half the price of costly spreads. So mothers, tomorrow be sure to buy delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Uncle Mort! Uncle Mort, here's a special delivery letter that came for you this afternoon. Oh? It's postmarked Savannah. Savannah, Georgia? Well, must be from Leela Ransom. Yeah, I'll just see what it says here. Mm. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Oop. Why, the little minx. Huh? Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what does she say, Uncle Mort? Uh, she says she's had a very good time and she'll be back Friday. Well, that's what she said. Now you go to bed. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekham. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> children in your family like cheese, then you can just bet they like Pabstet. It's so rich in mellow cheddar cheese flavor, so easy to digest. Pabstet is a cheese food that contains the nourishing food values of milk, and it's simply delicious, spread on bread or on crackers, or melted into a luscious cheese sauce for macaroni. And now the ration points are no longer required, you'll want to buy both delicious varieties, Golden Pabstet and Pimento Pabstet. Ask for Pabstet the delicious cheddar cheese food when you shop tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>